So the following presentation I gave way back in the summer of 2011 uh, after an internship that me and some fellow students at UCD were involved in. And it's essentially a um, description of a research topic that I was interested in, which is uh, the Cherenkov um, technique of imaging uh, gamma ray bursts, but also uh, the detection of cosmic ray muons. And believe it or not, this is actually the uh, origin of my channel's name. So it has a bit of interesting personal history for me. And it's actually one of the few um, audiovisual relics, if you like, uh, of my time in my undergraduate degree. So um, it's hard to believe, but it's actually approaching a 10 year anniversary since I got my Bachelor of Science and uh, this uh, internship, which uh, which the presentation uh, showcases is actually was actually done the year before I graduated. So my third year of my four year Bachelor of Science. So it's interesting to uh, look back on these things and to realize uh, mistakes that you've made uh, also kind of frames of mind you might have might might have been in uh, I might have been in uh, personally speaking I can say that uh, I was a lot more naive uh, back um, when I was doing my Bachelor of Science about science physics in general uh, my research interests have also diversified I've not uh, back then I was more interested in high energy particle physics and astrophysics as a uh, be an end all of uh, of physics, but my research interests have uh, diversified even beyond physics more and more into and uh, not only mathematics, pure mathematics, but also computer science and also um, ecology and uh, the uh, use of drones uh, in particular in um, mapping and cartography. So it's interesting that um, my from my own personal background, I was more focused on um, a particular niche, a particular very narrow domain of science, of physics, uh, but it has since diversified. And um, so if you have any questions on this, I will be happy to answer them uh, in real time. And I'll also share on GitHub some of the coding that I used uh, in this presentation. Uh, some of the coding was written in CERN, uh, CERN root, which is a uh, kind of like a uh, C++ basically fast ver C++ um, programming language used at CERN um, and it's not very widely used now maybe it'll start being more widely used uh, now that the LHC is back online who knows but um, in and of itself it's actually quite interesting to look back on this uh, research and on um, the use of CERN roots to do uh, Monte Carlo type simulations. But yeah, without further ado, I'll let you watch the video. And if you want to download any of the code used in this video, uh, feel free to do so on my GitHub page. I'll provide a link in the description. So my uh, project was to design a program that simulates high, high energy muons that are produced by cosmic rays. So I'm just going to explain uh, Shrank of radiation and the models and the physics involved and the description of what it's actually based on which is essentially shrank of um, telescopes and the pictures of the simulations have carried out and then I'll uh, answer your questions. So first of all cosmic rays are high energy particles with energies on the order of 10 to the power of 18 electron volts and above so that's to thus give an order of scale, most power supplies used in, say, households have energies on the order of a thousand, one kilo electron volt, and most powerful um, particles that we can accelerate are, are from the Large Hadron Collider, and they're about seven by ten to the twelve electron volts. So cosmic rays are clearly far more powerful than anything humans can uh, produce by themselves so it's a good idea to study them. So cosmic rays are mainly protons so there, there have been cases where um, iron nuclei have been observed and when a proton collides with a particle in the atmosphere it produces a cascade of uh, par other particles 
that are normally um, pions. And pions are known to decay uh, very quickly after they're formed into a uh, resulting cascade of muons, uh, muon neutrinos, and gamma rays. And because these particles are moving at ultra relativistic speeds, the muons are able to survive to Earth, to the Earth's surface by time dilation. And for that reason, they're able to also, the fact that they're traveling at ultra relativistic speeds, they're actually able to travel faster than the electric fields they produce are able to catch up to them. So then that actually results in a burst of what we call Shrenkov radiation. And thus to describe that in a bit more detail, as the particle is moving down towards the uh, atmosphere. So that basically means it's pointing in one direction. So we only see the radiation basically as a cone, kind of like a, uh, a Mac cone produced by a sonic boom. And basically um, that actually puts criteria on how many Shrenkov photons we'll see, and that's given by the equations down at the bottom uh, called the Frank Tam uh, equation. And thus, to move on a bit faster, um, yeah, thus Shrenkov astronomy is, a, is essentially the detection of high energy physics. So, using basically huge detector arrays, we're able to see, uh, say, these events given off, which are which are photons given off by uh, particles passing down through the atmosphere. And these can be cosmic rays, or they can be more importantly gamma rays, which is how we can actually do gamma ray observatory obs observations on the Earth's uh, surface. So we don't need to actually send uh, detectors into space to see gamma rays. We can do it just as easily. In fact, we can do it more easily on the Earth, and the results are just the same. Uh, the Veritas array, just to simulate the uh, how this actually happens when the shrink of light is given off, we see a kind of a ring or an ellipse in this case in the detector aperture. So, and if we put many arrays, such as used in the Veritas array, we can actually complement the uh, Fermi telescope in uh, space and just some of the sources of gamma rays. Um, the first six pictures are uh, more or less well understood. The last two pictures are not as much well understood, but uh, uh, with more and more detectors, we'll understand more of them. So just to go through briefly uh, what I've actually done, um, I've been able to simulate Shrenkov cones given off by a muon moving uh, through the atmosphere at about 10 kilometers in kind of rings using s various statistics uh, from uh, uh, nuclear physics and um, particle physics. So the Shrenkov rings given off are statistical um, numbers based on the Frank Tam formula that I've shown beforehand. And with this you can basically distribute photons on the ground and as seen in the, in the detector aperture which has a given mean field of view and a given number of pixels. So with this you can do it with one and with more you can do it with other ones. And then the final product is basically that you can duplicate the effects as seen in the detector, so you can see rings, you can see them at zero degrees, you can see them at 20 degrees, and you can see that the one at zero degrees is a perfect ring, the one at 10 to 20 degrees is kind of an ellipse. And with even more advances, you can see the rings given by Bremsstrahlung photons and high energy Coulomb scattering, which is the muon moving around, interacting with the atmosphere. And those are my references. And does any questions or not? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Good talk. Any yeah. quick questions on uh, shrink of radiation or detection? Or muons or anything? Um, are there any current um, are there any current uh, uh, optical telescopes uh, in the atmosphere that are detecting strength of radiation, or is it purely an effect that happens through the atmosphere? Uh, it's an effect that, well, in that case, it's an effect that happens through the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it can only happen like in the presence of yeah. so a, it's another just, medium. It's just a method of detection. Yeah, the yeah, it's just a method. There are, there are other methods, like, say, like you can use the most advanced method I think I showed in the front image is uh, a water strength of detector, which is like Super Cameo Candy or the Sudbury. 
uh, neutrino observatory in um, Canada, so they would be used for like higher energy, more detailed images. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so...